Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I'm back again today at the Rock Island Auction House, taking a look at some more of their guns from the upcoming September 2015 Premier Auction. Now yesterday we took a look at the earliest of Remington Lees, the Model 1879. Today we're going to take a look at the last of the black powder Remington Lees. This is the 1885 pattern. Although I should point out that in Remington's catalog, this was always simply referred to as the Remington Lee rifle. Now, the 1885 pattern, a number of refinements have been made. Not really any groundbreaking changes, but they kept just gradually improving different elements. So the magazine is yet another improved modification of the original Lee magazine. A number of improvements have been made to the bolt. Um, although overall, these were still in 4570 and 43 Spanish caliber. Um, now, to go back over the production numbers, the 1879 pattern, they made about 8,800 of in total. And then the 1882, which is the intermediary, which I don't have an example of, unfortunately, at this point. Um, these were all numbered in the same serial number range. So the 1882s ran until about 41,000. And then finally, we have the 1885 pattern, which ran serial numbers to about 54,000. So the mid-range one actually had the most produced. The 1885 is a little bit unusual in that, as with several of these others, it actually didn't go into production until late 1886. And Remington, at that point, had gone into bankruptcy. Um, they'd been having some financial problems. They'd tried to diversify, and it didn't really work well. And Well, the short version is they went into receivership. Um, a, an investment group stepped up to buy them out and reorganize them. Instead of being E. Remington and Son, it became the Remington Arms Company. And the company fully came out of bankruptcy in about 1888. Well, while they were in the middle of that process, they started producing and marketing these rifles. So initially, they were sold commercially. Uh, they were also purchased in small numbers by both uh, Great Britain and also New Zealand. Now, New Zealand rather infamously had a bunch of problems with the guns, um, which seemed to be mostly traced to the fact that they tried to make their own ammunition indigenously, and it was kind of crap ammunition. They had a lot of problems with uh, cartridge cases rupturing and gas blowing all over the place and guns having problems. And uh, they New Zealand ultimately, in kind of a huff, surplused all of its 1885 Remington Lees. Well, the U.S. Navy actually came back and in total ordered about 3,400 of these rifles, uh, both for use by the Navy itself and also the naval militias. This would prove to be the last magazine rifle that the Navy purchased prior to their adoption of a different James Paris Lee rifle, the Winchester Lee Navy 1895, which is a straight pole. Anyway, this particular one is from the a second order of uh, naval rifles. Order was placed in 1889, delivered of Ju in June of that year. Remington actually had produced a whole bunch of these rifles ahead of time in one large batch and then put them into storage and sold them as it could. Now they'd produced them in both 43 Spanish and 4570. The Navy and the Navy militias ended up buying virtually all of the, that production of 45 caliber rifles, uh, about 3,400 of them. The 43 Spanish didn't sell nearly as well. Um, and they were actually in Remington's catalogs until the 1904-1905 the catalog. Now, why don't I bring the camera back here? There are a couple interesting details of the action that we ought to take a closer look at. All right, so the 1885 Lee is still a cock on closing action, like we will come to expect with, frankly, all of the British Lee Enfields. By the way, the British adopted the, the Lee, uh, the original Lee guns in 1888. So really right around this same time. These were being manufactured uh, from 1889 to 1894. So in between when this was designed and accepted by the Navy and when they were actually ordered and delivered, uh, the British went ahead and adopted this type of rifle. Now the magazine in the 1885 pattern has been, as I mentioned, improved. The feed lips are quite a bit longer. They now functionally actually hold cartridges in the magazine when the magazine is out of the gun. They also now have a flat coiled spring that's attached to the front of the follower. Unfortunately, I can't easily disassemble this to show you that, but the upshot of it was that it provided a much smoother, uh, more regular spring tension on the follower, which made for more reliable feeding. Um, these are still brazed together back here, and uh, we have now a couple of distinctive reinforcing grooves to help guide the follower and strengthen the magazine body. One major change that has been made to the action 
is that the bolt handle has been moved here to the very back of the bolt. Instead of the bolt handle being a locking lug, we now have two locking lugs here separately. So this one's in the same place that the bolt handle used to be, but it's no longer attached to the handle. The cocking piece has also been enlarged, so it's easier to use. See there, a little bit bigger. Disassembly is done in the same way. You put a screwdriver into this little slot, pry forward to pull this spring off, and then the bolt head comes out separately, and the bolt body can come out the back of the magazine. Uh, as before, I'm a little paranoid about doing that to a rifle that I don't own here, so I will leave it to this rifle's buyer to experiment with pulling the bolt out. We do still have this spring-loaded blade here. That's to simplify uh, single-loading the gun, so you can drop a cartridge in one at a time. That was a common practice in this era. Well, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something about another progression of James Paris Lee's very many firearms designs. If you'd like to have this one yourself, add it to your own collection, you can certainly do so if you'd like. The, uh, the rifle is coming up for sale. If you check the link in the description text below, that'll take you to Rock Island's catalog page about it, and you can see their estimated value, their pictures, their description, and all of that. And then either place a bit online or come down here in person. Thanks for watching.